there is a rebellion brewing in America, and all rebellions start small, and they grow slowly but surely. Right now, we have an avalanche brewing, and the avalanche is about Obama's, not so much where he was born, but is he really loyal to America? You see, the subtext of this whole issue of is he an American citizen is by his behavior, he may as well not be an American citizen. I mean, let's cut to the chase here. The man is a stealth Marxist. He is the joker. He promised to end the war in Iraq, and he opened up a bigger front in Afghanistan. He promised no new taxes. Now they're promising new taxes. He has nationalized the banks. He has nationalized the auto industry. He now wants to nationalize the health care industry. In other words, he's moving faster than Chavez did in Venezuela. The fact of the matter is the people are not stupid, and they're standing up to him. So behind all of this is the Bertha thing. Naturally, his uh, Obama's little men and women in the media, if you want to use a nice word, the little useful idiots in the media are all on his side. They won't raise the question. The attorney behind the Obama eligibility lawsuits, one of them is Dr. Orly Tates. She joins us now from Israel. Israel, Dr. Tates, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hi, thank you for inviting me. Now, the, you came from the Soviet Union originally, and you say that drawing on your experiences under a communist regime, you want to stop America from following in the footsteps of your former homeland. Is that what's behind this? Absolutely. Uh, the man is more than socialist. He's a communist. Uh, and uh, I believe he's such a dangerous combination. It's uh, radical communism. It's uh, his upbringing uh, in the environment of radical Islam that he absorbed in Pakistan, in Indonesia, during, during Sukarno, and also the environment of Chicago Mafia, Chicago Mafia uh, political environment. Uh, and all of it taken together, all of it amalgamized in one is extremely dangerous for this nation. And I'm shocked, I'm absolutely shocked uh, in regards to what I'm seeing. Uh, I, I'm seeing fear, I'm seeing corruption, uh, I'm seeing brown shirts in the media attacking, insulting, calling names. They Dr. Tates, them. let's stop right there. I agree with you. I call them much worse names than brown shirts, but I saw you today on MSNBC with that creepy character. Uh, when you said brown shirts, he, he acted offended and he said, well, well no, those are fighting words for people who've lost uh, relatives in the Holocaust. But you handled him pretty well because, yes, you said, yes, it really is offensive because I lost family in the Holocaust as well. And that shut his mouth pretty quick. So you trumped his card on that level. But I understand what you're saying, Dr. Tates. Let's go to the issue itself of eligibility. I agree with you on politic the politics. I have called him a Marxist for a long time now. I think he's one of the most dangerous men in the world because he presents himself as a benign figure when in fact he's not. We've got to remember the image of the smiling Joseph Stalin and the horrors that followed. Uh, not all dictators come with screaming and yelling. Some come with smiles. And the American people are easily duped by a smile because they grew up with Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. What is it about the birth issue that uh, intrigues you the most in terms of the legality of it? How do you, what makes you suspect it's all a fraud? Okay, well, there are two main issues. Do you recall last year there was a non-binding Senate Resolution 511, whereby all 100 senators have signed that McCain is eligible for two reasons. They used a two-prong test stating that both of McCain's parents were citizens and he was born in the zone of Panama Canal, which was an American territory. Obama failed both tests. A, because his father was never a U.S. citizen. He came here on a student visa from Kenya, which was a British colony. He, he had British citizenship, and according to British Nationality Act of 1948, Obama inherited British citizenship at birth. And uh, when you look at, at this term... Oh, well, let's stop right here. Wait, wait, wait. Let me stop you right here. There is a clause in America that permits the children of illegal aliens, even though his mother was a natural citizen. In other words, even a child born to an illegal alien is an American citizen. You're saying he wasn't even born on American soil is your contention, correct? Yeah. It, well, there is a difference. That's according to 14th Amendment, and that is something that uh, specifies 
citizenship, just regular citizenship. And you're right on that. But in order to be the president of the United States, it's not enough to be just a citizen. You have to be a natural-born citizen. And a lot of people believe that natural-born, it means only born in the country. No, that's native-born. Native-born is one who is born in the country. Natural-born citizens is one who is born in the country to two parents that are citizens of that country. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. Well, but let's pause right here. But isn't the bigger issue that he acts as though he is not an American citizen in terms of his disloyalty to this country, that almost every act seems to be an act in favor of some other country? Witness his last tour apologizing for America, the greatest country in the history of the world. Why would he go to the king of Saudi Arabia and bow down to him and receive a gold necklace as though he was a cheap rap artist? Uh, I think many of these things are troubling as well as his politics, which are extreme, extremely communistic to anyone who understands history. But Dr. Tates, you are a doctor. I understand also you're a second degree black belt. You're a mother of three boys who speaks five languages. I understand all of this. You're an intelligent, educated woman who came from the Soviet Union. Do you know that almost 30 million Americans are on antidepressants? Do you understand we have a nation of drug addicts who don't know and don't care what's going on around them? Well, uh, that might be true. However, according to latest AOL poll, poll 85% of Americans Obama was never vetted, that he needs to be vetted, and he needs to disclose his records. So that's very encouraging. Wait, wait, so you're saying a Wall Street Journal poll? I didn't catch that. Did you say Wall Street Journal poll? No, America Online poll. And it's very large uh, poll. Uh, I, I believe it was 100,000 people that they polled. It was a very large poll, and they found that 85% of Americans feel that he needs to disclose his vital records. So I feel very encouraged. All right, so the hacks who work for him and the drug addicts who front for him, uh, the performers and the clowns, say that the birth notice in the newspaper is sufficient. You and I both know that's rubbish. Yeah, it is, absolutely. And as a matter of fact, uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure how much your listeners know, but in Hawaii, there are four different types of birth certificates. One is a proper birth certificate from the hospital. They also have a birth certificate that can be obtained based on a statement of one relative only, without any corroborating evidence from any hospital. And I suspect that was the birth certificate that Obama got, and that's why he's refusing to sign a consent form and release the original birth certificate from Hawaii, because it will show that it was obtained based on a statement of one relative only, who simply, probably the mother or the grandmother, who didn't want to bother with going through immigration, with paying immigration law. I understand. Now, Dr. Tates, you're an Israeli citizen, so people could argue that your, your, your whole reason for doing this is because Obama is pro-Arab and anti-Israel. Now, I, I don't agree with that because my good friend Joe Farah has been on this almost alone for 11 months, and I know you and he know each other. And I had a, a Philip Berg on this show over two, I think a year and a half ago on this issue. Do you know who Philip Berg is? Oh, I definitely know. No, okay. I, no, what I'm saying is one of the reasons that the media will pick you to talk with you is because to them they think you're going to be an easy target in that you're a, an Israeli citizen and they can make mincemeat out of you because you're so far away. The reason they won't pick on a Philip Berg is because he's a Democrat. He's always been a Democrat and he's a former assistant attorney general for the state of Pennsylvania. So there are many people who are starting to ask the same question. So let's cut to the bottom line here. Let's say it's proven that Obama is not an American citizen. What happens then? Uh, well, first of all, uh, I'd like to, to, to qualify. He can be a citizen, but not natural-born citizen, meaning that either one of his parents is not a citizen or he was not born in the country or both. If that is the case, that according to the 20th Amendment and requirements of core warrant, he needs to be removed from office immediately. He does not even qualify for impeachment. And in this situation, Biden does not become a, a president for three and a half years. He becomes only a pro tempore president for a couple of months until a new election is scheduled. That's it. 
Um, Dr. Tates, I, I, I have followed this from the outside and not gotten involved because some very good people have been following it. It's not my, my, uh, my issue. It's your issue. It's Joe Farah's issue. But, you know, when Obama was running for office, I said on this program repeatedly that this unknown senator from Chicago's uh, wards would not even pass an FBI background exam to become an FBI agent. Obama could not pass an exam to become a Secret Service agent because of his past associations with some dangerous people. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. He wouldn't be hired to be a janitor. In the wouldn't jump to the janitor. But listen to the issue, though. I think that you ought to remember this, Orly, because they're going to keep hammering you. And you ought to say, are you aware that Obama could not have passed a, a Secret Service background test to become a guard to his own office? Meaning he couldn't become a Secret Service agent because of his, uh, his associations with Bill Ayers. That alone would have disqualified him.